Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call the Tuesday, September 21st Planning Commission meeting to order. Would you all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> All right, Mr. Bentley, would you please call the roll? Yes. <coughs> Mr. Hardy. Here. Mr. Tuckfield. Here. Mr. Provenzano. Mr. Provenzano is going to be absent tonight, and we'll count it as an excused absence. Mr. Schuto. Here. Mr. Spadafora. Here. Mr. Oliver. Here. Mr. Bentley, I'm here. Okay. And at this time, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to exclude Member Pro Provenzano for any and all roll call votes. Okay. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Uh, motion by Mr. Schuto, seconded by Mr. Bentley. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Motion passes. All right. Approval of previous meeting minutes. Is there any discussion on our last? meetings minutes from anyone if there's no further discussion make a motion we accept the minutes as read okay motion by mr shuto to accept the minutes from our last meeting as read second oh. seconded by mr spadaforo all in favor aye. Aye. aye motion passes approval of tonight's agenda any discussion do i have a motion Mr. Chairman, if there's no additions, corrections, uh, I move we accept the agenda. Motion by Mr. Oliver. Second. Seconded by Mr. Spadafora. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. All right, on to new business, public hearings. Uh, rezoning 51, I have to use my spectacles for this one, 51660. Romeo Plank Road, residential one family suburban R1S to residential multifamily low density R2L. Permanent parcel 0817, 426003, and 0817-402005. Located on the east side of Romeo Plank Road, north of 23 Mile. Section 17, Macomb Township Petitioner. Mr. Box. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Commission. Uh, so this first item, uh, as you mentioned, is with regards to a uh, rezoning of a property along uh, Romeo Plank Road. It's actually two parcels. Um, the township has initiated this request uh, to rezone it from R1S to R2L. Um, the township has done this um, essentially due to the fact that there's a lot of floodplains as well as it, it uh, will provide some uh, some buffer from the neighboring uses uh, from the commercial and office use to the south to the more single family use to the north. The R2L zone uh, district aligns with all of the property across the street, across Romeo Plank from it, so it's a good fit and uh, it does match uh, plans for the new master plan that we are working on at this time. Uh, and at this time, the, the planning department does recommend approval for the requested rezoning. Okay. Well, we have a lot of folks in the audience. Could you maybe define or explain the difference between um, R1S and R2L? So R1S uh, is, is a zoning for single-family uses. Um, it's, it's another agenda item. We're going to touch on it a lot more, but uh, it is for single-family uses within the township. Um, a little bit larger lots typically, uh, whereas R2L uh, would, would be, you know, condo type units or duplex type units, okay. a little bit more uh, density. All right. Is the petitioner here? Supervisor Viviano, would you like yes. to speak? Um, yeah, I'll, what I'll add to what Mr. Box just said, uh, this property is owned by the township. Um, Right now, the way it sits um, as R1 property, uh, you can see 
if you can tell in the diagram on the, on the screen, the uh, portion of the Kirtland River bisects the property uh, and leaving the entire eastern side landlocked. Uh, that portion of the property is effectively useless. If you take the eastern side, it measures out to a little over seven acres that's actually um, available on that side. And then if you overlay the floodplain on it, there's even less that's actually buildable for future use. Uh, there, there really isn't a way to put an R1 development in there outside of like maybe a single house, but it's useless as R1 it, uh, it, in order for it to move forward and be consistent with its environment and with the other neighboring properties, uh, multiple residential is appropriate. Okay, thank you. Commissioners, discussion from the commissioners. Questions? Anyone? Anyone? Else? No one? Okay. Then at this time, I'd like a motion to open it to the public. So moved. Motion by Mr. Shudo. Second. Seconded by Mr. Spadafora. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Motion passes. And as we open the public portion at 638, any person wishing to speak will be recognized and will be asked to give their name and address before speaking. We ask that all speakers limit their comments to four minutes. Once the public portion is closed, we will not recognize any further discussion or comments from the community. Is there anyone that would like to speak on this item? Please come to the podium and state your name and address. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'd like to thank everybody for coming. Thank you. Nice to see some support nowadays. Anyway, my name is Thomas Macheri. My address is 51753 Woodside Drive. I am right on Woodside Drive. Uh, I am three houses north of your the yellow line there on top. Um, you're in the, I don't know if you guys have seen this, but that's all floodplain back there. When it floods, it floods right up to the people's houses, right up to their door walls. And one of the reasons why is because there's a strip mall on 23 and Romeo Plank. And what they did is they started building there. When they started building there, guess what happened? It flooded. So what they did, they tore everything down. It took them about three or four months to build that up. So they built that up to the street level. They also built a wall. Now, when it floods, guess where it floods? It doesn't flood to the west side. It floods to the east side. Now, if you start building in there, guess what's going to happen? Any, can anybody guess? Anybody? Well, We're first of all, let, let's not talk to the... the, the no, no, no. This man has the floor, and just Mr. Tom here is the only one that's going to be speaking right now. You'll have your chance if you'd like to come up and talk. Go ahead, sir. I, I just it, It's going to flood. It's going to flood our basements. It's going to flood our houses. So I'm, I'm totally against this. I don't know if you guys see this. Oh, I'm sorry. But this is all floodplain back there. And there's one other thing. Right behind my property, um, it says, excuse me, wetlands. There's, there's a wetland back there. Do you, guys, do you guys see that on your map? Can I ask questions to you? or No, no, no. You're, I can't ask any it's questions. It's your you... time to share your comments and your concerns. And then at the end, we will have Mr. Box do address some of those comments and concerns from the whole group. Okay. Okay. It, but it says potential wetlands. So when you guys get a chance to speak and answer our questions, I would like to know what potential wetlands means. Is it a wetland? Could it be a wetland? I don't know. So I'm very concerned about this. Um, 
uh, again, it floods back, back there every single year. What happens in the wintertime, the, the, the land freezes, and then we get rains. You have guess about what? a minute left. So. Right. The land freezes, and guess what? Guess what happens? The water stays on top. There's no place for the water to go but towards us, towards the east, because of your, well, not yours, but because of the, uh, the strip mall. Thank you. The strip mall. So, guys, please consider this. I mean, this, this is our property. This is our lives. Please consider this. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else who would like to speak? Come on up, ma'am. Please state your name and address for us, please. Hi, my name is Lisa Sloan. I live at 15751 Woodside Drive, right next to Tom there, two doors down. I guess my question is, if you do build, how far back are you coming? Are you going to take all of our woods down, all of the trees, so there's nothing there? Like, how far and how, or how close to my backyard are you going to be? We've been there for 21 years. Those trees in the fall are beautiful, and I would really hate to see them go. And I know that you really don't care if I, what I say, but we worked hard to live where we live. We personally picked those plots out that we paid more for. And I guess that's my question. Like, how much of my beauty are you going to take away from all of us that live on that street? That's it. Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else? Please come up. Uh, my name is Sharon Vagie, 51493 Woodside Drive. I've been on Woodside for 20 years, and when I purchased my home, they told me it was a floodplain in back of me and nothing would be built back there. I have pictures every time it rains. The latest ones I have, if you'd like to see them, are from the horrible rains we had in June. And we were flooded. We were flooded. And I don't know what multiple dwellings are going to do back there. And I don't know how close you're going to be to my property. But I can show you that the, the area behind our properties was indeed flooded and i don't know where all the water's gonna go folks thank you ma'am anyone else My name is Mary Ellen Mischeri, 51753 Woodside. I was just wondering if we could give this to you so you would have this detailed map as to what we're referring to. Give it to our lawyer or our supervisor right there. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Seeing none, I'd like a motion to close the public hearing at 6.45. Anybody have what would like so to So moved. Motion by Mr. Oliver. Second. Seconded by Mr. Spadafora. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The public portion is now closed. Okay. Mr. Box, would you like to make some comments? Sure. Um, I didn't see exactly the map he was holding, but it, it appeared to be uh, from Macomb County GIS. So with regards to potential wetlands, uh, that's that's land that uh, the county has identified as possibly being wetlands uh, with with regards to the the red flood plain and flood zone there's some differences there uh, I guess first of all we're, we're talking about a rezoning there's no development proposed right now this is strictly a rezoning um, should a development happen in the future that would all have to be approved through the drain office drain commission um, I don't have it in front of me but I, I think the property at the corner that they're speaking of with the shopping center I think there's no detention base in there I think it was built before that was a requirement uh, new standards required det on-site detention uh, so if, if they have impervious surface uh, they would that runoff would be captured on site 
Uh, that's a new requirement uh, since that other development took place, I do believe. So um, it, it would be thoroughly investigated um, by the county drain office as well as our township engineering staff of whether or not the development was acceptable or not. So it's something that would definitely be looked at before any development would be approved. But again, we're, we're here for a rezoning, not any development tonight. Okay, so there's no development, no plans for any development as of right now. Correct. Correct. Okay. Excuse me, Mr. Chair. Oh, go ahead, Mr. Viviano. If I could, um, I'm going to, since our township engineer is here, I'm going to put him on the spot. <laughs> You're, you can thank me later, Jim. <clears throat> So Jim, uh, for the sake of the residents' concerns, if this parcel would ever move forward in any kind of development, um, what would be what would happen uh, with that floodplain? So the the process is once the site plan is approved, they would come into the township for engineering review. Um, they would have to go to the county. Uh, Josh is right, the drain office, because the, technically that river is the is the county drain, but also the state of Michigan has jurisdiction because of the floodplain. So the way it would work is anybody that would develop it um, with regard to the floodplain, they could not fill in the fill in the floodplain in the traditional sense that everybody thinks. They have to, if they fill in one spot, they have to cut in another. So the net change to the floodplain is zero. So it's just moving the water around um, from one spot to another on the property itself. So there's no, there would be no change to the floodplain elevation. And then Josh is correct, the drain office now has new standards that detention is required in all new, new developments. Their latest standards even require some infiltration if that's possible. Uh, Macomb County is famous for clay, so that might not be possible, but there's extended detention requirements if infiltration can't happen. So the, the, the standards have changed a lot since um, the plaza was built on the corner um, with regard to detention requirements. So Mr. Van Tiflin, if a developer came to you how many steps would he have to or would she have to go through to get approval to build there are three different agencies that they need to get uh, obtain approval from in order to build um, with regard to the floodplain and stormwater runoff the the township the county and the state and they all have to meet those requirements or we will not allow that project to move forward so if any one of them said no the project can't move forward. That's that's correct. Okay. Usually what happens is the developer will make adjustments to the to their plans so that they can move forward, but they, they have to meet all of those requirements. Okay. Thank you. Commissioners, do you have anything else you'd like to share? Mr. Mr. Dugfield? Mr. Chairman, I did have a question. I think it's to the petitioner. I think Mr. Viviano is serving as that this evening. Uh, Mr. Viviano, I, I think you expressed this earlier, but I just want to confirm the, the basic concept here is the assumption is that the east end of the property on the east side of the river is not buildable as far as value is concerned. Is that roughly, is that roughly the concern here? Um, well, as, as Jim described, if someone were to come in with a plan to, to cut and fill, meaning they would open up enough space to accommodate the floodplain without encroaching on the neighbors, there could be some buildable uh, acreage back there. Uh, right now, as we own it, um, it is uh, financially um, in, inconceivable to put a span across that bridge. It's just not, it's, we, no, no project could sustain it. For, so for it's the value that you could get on the east side, it wouldn't make sense. No, no, because it's only eight acres over there. And, and you'd have to put in a half million dollar bridge to get to it. And it's, it's effectively landlocked. And it's, it's useless to, tho to us um, as the township. We own the entire thing, but we only can really get to the front seven acres. So for, for us, I know we've seen things like this before. I don't know if it's been with you been here, but we've looked at this as balancing the property where the, the whole property can't support the density. Uh, the, the, the portion of the property that's billable cannot support the density of the gross acreage of the parcel. And so we've looked at that. And this kind of makes me think of that. I think we had that at 25 and Romeo Plank and maybe a few other places where we have something bisecting the property. I guess my question is when you were thinking about it, did you guys consider a conditional rezoning? where if the back half was buildable, maybe an R1, it, it seems like the justification here, it's not with our current master plan, is the difference in density. And so if we had something tied to that, it just seems like it would, it would maybe, it, it would maybe complement the current master plan. Is that something you've considered? Yeah, I, uh, any project that comes forward, if the township um, 
ultimately doesn't end up using that for public public good for public service um, they could still come in and develop it as r1 they could come in at a lower at lower density they still would have to meet every standard uh, we sort of looked at it with the amount of cut and fill that would be necessary they would in effect meet an r1 standard under R1, under the zoning designation, they're allowed to do so. Understood. I guess what I'm looking at is if you end up using the east end of the parcel, some of my justification or the logical justification to me that seems to flow with the master plan does not stay the same because if someone does incur the expense, if it ends up being feasible to put a bridge across, now you are equaling density that is greater than the original master plan density. Whereas if they don't build on the east side, to me, it's it. Maybe both make sense, but one flows from the existing plan to the request much easier. So I guess that, that's why I was asking. One thing I would add, uh, Mr. Tuckfield, is, is that in order to rezone the eastern half, we would have to split the property. In order to split the property, you'd have landlocked parcels, which we don't allow. Uh, and we don't allow split zoning uh, to take place at this time either. So. Right now, we can't rezone the back half one thing and the front half another thing. No, and I, and I would understand. I think the question was maybe con, maybe conditionally. Obviously, the, we can't think, request conditionally yeah, rezone. And, and I think Mr. Tuckfield is asking if we could use the, the landlocked portion to balance the front half and end up with. Well, essentially, uh, that's, I think, what you're expecting is going to happen, if I'm hearing you correctly. You're expecting we, that it's not going to be feasible to build on the east half. We considered that, and it's not feasible for the owner of the front half. I didn't say it wasn't. There are still two neighboring properties that in the future, and I don't know what's going to happen, could there get could to that property. There could potentially be other avenues to, to access the property. Yeah. And suddenly it might right, now there, right now there's none for, for, as the petitioner, we own the entire thing. Our value is really what's on Romeo Plank. The back half is inaccessible to us. We have to go through a neighbor's property. And at this time, in order to do conditional rezoning, they, they typically have a concept plan. Uh, we are not developers. We have no concept because we're not the ones that will ultimately develop it. No, and understanding, I think, what Mr. Viviano was saying about access to the back half makes it more sense. I guess then the second question, this might be more on the planning end, um, and this speaks to maybe my unfamiliarity of where uh, R1 and R2 directly buffer sharing streets as opposed to join. What happens when an R1 and an R2 meet? I know a lot of time R2s have privately owned streets, or it's not uncommon for them to have privately owned streets. What happens if someone builds back there and stubs on? Is that, uh, does that cause us a problem if there's another development in the back? And, and stubs out to that? And stubs to the resident, the R1 that's back there in some way. Uh, I think the R1 that's back there, uh, the street that many of them are speaking of, actually does have a stub into the area that they're suggesting is floodplain. Uh, so that stub already exists. Correct. I guess my question is we wouldn't end up having a problem going directly from R1 to R2 public to private or any other, you wouldn't anticipate no. an issue there? No. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Viviano. Thank you, Mr. Box. And Mr. Lawyer. Okay. Anyone else? So my understanding is uh, the change from R1S to R2L, which is a higher density, um, would be to allow um, construction on the, the west half of that site uh, closer to uh, Romeo Plank and uh, thereby allowing the east half to remain uh, floodplain or uh, what have you. Well, I, th I think it's just to allow, uh, you know, the density that you would get from an R1 um, to still develop even though the vast majority of the parcel is probably in a, f a situation of uh, where it's a floodplain that can't develop. So same density amount just fit on a smaller footprint within the parcel. Whether that's on the west half or the east half, I, th I think the concept is fitting the density of an R1 on a smaller piece. All right. That was my my understanding. Um, there would also um, we can't put any kind of restriction on that east half uh, of that property of of no construction. Uh, obviously, the state. Um, as well has a say in what can be built and what they can do. Um, 
with the uh, the floodplains and uh, uh, the waterways as well. So that's correct. Um, and by the time you put in a retention basin, uh, you're eating up quite a bit of uh, property there as correct. well. All right. Thank you. Okay. I Anyone? Got, I got one question. Sure. In your professional experience, Mr. Van Tiflin, what you've seen in the past, you would say the east half of that property would be a tough piece of property to develop. I'm, I'm not asking you to say it can't be developed, but what you've seen, and because you're in it every day with the, um, the state of Michigan, you're in it with Macomb County, you're in it with us, so, so you see it. Yes, based on what I've ob observed in, in doing some research on, on that half of the property, there's a significant amount of floodplain over there. What we don't know is how deep the floodplain is, how much water, what's the volume of the water that, that is being stored there while the river floods. So in order for that, that piece to be, de be developed, a significant study would have to be done to figure out how much cut would have to be done in order to fill maybe the east half of the property over by the existing subdivision. So yeah, anybody that buys that, anybody that goes to develop that would have to put a lot of work into figuring all that out and satisfying the three agencies that I mentioned earlier. And not only work, high finance. Yes, yeah, it's expensive to move Very dirt expensive. around, and, yes. And then in the end, just if they could, right now we already know at least half of it could ever be developed just by, just by looking at how low it lays right <coughs> off the bat. So it would be a tough sell to get maybe even 30% of that developed. Yeah, we, we, it's hard for me to answer that at yeah, this point with, without yeah. having more information. But I, mean, I, I have seen um, other developments where you know they, the developer is able to get a significant amount of property that is that is developable. Um, but you know, this on that half of the property, I'd, I'd say a good half of it or two thirds of it is shown in the floodplain. Whether that's accurate right or not, we don't know. You know, the map that was that was provided. You know that that was probably from FEMA, and that was their best guess without actually going out there and getting a topographic survey of the of the existing ground. So I don't want uh, speaking to the residents. I don't want you thinking that. You know, in the next five years, you're going to see a solid mass of homes because I just don't feel that's going to happen. And uh, and if it does happen, it'll be very limited. To what can actually get in there? Yes, the, the, there, it is also encumbered by a sanitary sewer easement that runs <clears throat> on the backside of those those houses. There's a, a, a big sanitary sewer that serves the north end of the township that runs through there. So I think that easement is 30 feet wide. So there are challenges. It's a, it's to a very complicated piece of property. Yes. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. So, Mr. Chair, if I could add one more comment. Sure. Um, just so that the the uh, planning commission is clear. Um, and we didn't. We sort of danced into a few areas that were, um, you know, I, I hadn't really, you know, addressed yet. But the piece as a whole right now is is up for rezoning uh, <coughs> because it is bisected by that river. Uh, the township envisions a time where there could possibly be two landowners there, whether we're still one of them or somebody else is our own, own. Somebody else owns both of them, but because it is effectively landlocked cost prohibitive to put in a bridge there could be in the future a time when there are two pieces of property there where the devising line is the river um, so one of the reasons we believe it's appropriate for the higher density is so that the front half again in the future could be developed properly the back half is as mr. Van Tiflin said is a, is a challenge um, if anybody would really want to invest into it um, they would have to address the concerns of those three agencies and in doing so, they would alleviate um, the concerns that the residents brought up. Okay. Thank you, Thank Mr. You. Oliver. Thanks, Mr. Van Mr. Bentley, did you say you had another question? I did have, there were uh, two items that <coughs> I don't know that they have been addressed that were brought up by um, the public hearing. Uh, one being uh, wetlands potential. Um, can you address that? Uh, uh, yeah, so I, I did mention that previously that that's comes from the county uh, GIS system and it's a, exactly what it sounds like. It's their best guess from looking at an aerial that there's potentially wetlands there. Uh, 
whether that there are or there are not you know wetlands there that's as mr van tiflin has stated it would have to be investigated before any development is done we have to check for snails and things like that correct <clears throat> um that would be uh, uh prevalent uh in wetlands um and then the other concern was uh destroying some of the beauty of uh so as i see it the development uh wouldn't be touching um and and this this zoning change does not affect uh any any of the trees or or anything else is yeah that there's correct? no there's no development proposed at this time so. correct okay thank you mr bentley <coughs> all right if there's no one else then do we have a motion on the floor mr chairman Mr. Spadafora. Uh, pursuant to the presentations um, by our departments and as also addressed by our township engineer and township supervisor, I will move to recommend a rezoning of uh, 51660 Romeo Plank Road from residential one family suburban to residential multifamily low density. Parcel numbers 0817426003 and 0817402. Uh, 005. Okay. Motion by Mr. Spadafora. Support. Supported by Mr. Shudo. Mr. <laughs> Bentley, please call the roll. Mr. Spadafora. Yes. Mr. Shudo. Yes. Mr. Tuckfield. Yes. Mr. Pro Mr. Uh, Bentley. Yes. Mr. Hardy. Yes. Mr. Oliver. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you very much. <coughs> On to the next item. Special land use. God's love overpowers child care. Permanent parcel 08 07 located on the south of 25 mile east of Hayes, section seven, Laura Warwich, petitioner. Is she here? Okay, come on up. All right, Mr. Box. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman and Commission. Uh, I, I'm sure uh, the petitioner can can speak to some of this as well, but uh, I know we've had some, some questions or, or comments in the past about uh, some child care or adult foster care. So there are some regulations through the state of Michigan um, up to six individuals is completely regulated by the state of Michigan. The township or the county has no authority over that. Uh, when they go from the next step up, which is uh, six to 12, uh, that's where we have some ability to, to weigh in. Uh, in in this case, we, we do that through the special land use process. Uh, it is my understanding that uh, the petitioner already has the one to six uh, students uh, in this facility. Um, I think all of these documents were in your packet uh, per, per the planning department review. Um, they have met all apl applicable requirements um, uh, as well as the screening, uh, which is, is something that's recommended through the state of Michigan. Uh, we did go out and, and investigate and there were pictures to provide uh, that screening and fencing is available. Um, and at this time, um, planning staff is recommending approval as they have sufficiently addressed all items. Did you have anything you'd like to share? Please give us your name and address. Um, my name is Laura Warwick, and I am at 54600 Laurel Drive. Um, we opened the child care during COVID because we had a lot of doctors and we had postal service workers, people that I knew that really were in a bind for help. So we did it out of a kind of a... a I don't want to say a uh, heart to help the community and those that we know in the community. And our, our goal is not to be a busy 12 center child care. Our goal with addressing 12 children is to give flexibility to some of our part timers if they need an extra day here or there. Right now our ratios are six children. So if one of my part time children needed a day, let's say there was an issue at work or a schedule change, I can't offer any of my part time parents an extra day. 
And so this really isn't to max out the neighborhood, have cars going here and there and, and, and any of that. It's, it's really just to help the families we are already taking care of just have some flexibility in their schedules. Um, we, we try to keep it very quiet. We're very respectful. We, um, we wave at all the people. They all know us going to the school in the morning for playtime and different things. So it's not something that we're looking to um, bring a lot to the neighborhood, a lot of busyness or anything like that. That's not our objective. We didn't open this on a money issue. It, it really was to help people. I do have two staff members that are with me to help um, oversee the children. If it was a money issue, I would be doing it by myself. Uh, we have cameras in our facility and our, our basement has been completely converted um, properly per guidelines. Um, quite a bit of money has been invested into it. Again, we do it because we have a heart for the children. We have a whole little structured day for them. We teach them things, we, we do educational things, we take them on little field trips. It's something that we offer because we truly love them and we love their parents. And so we really are doing this, again, not to bring in a lot of traffic. To I know that's going to be probably people's thoughts is the traffic coming in and out. We did expand our driveway this summer to allow just for cars to, you know, not be in the street and if they're dropping off. But I really, I only have about four families right now. It's just, again, to allow some leeway for the parents to um, have peace of mind if, you know, Bobby at school is sick and he can come at a certain time, whereas, you know, if there's other children there, he can't because, again, we, we do everything by ratio. Okay. And at one to six, you mm -hmm. still have the state of Michigan's rules and regulations to follow. Yes. And from seven to 12, the state of Michigan is still... You know, making sure that you're oh, doing ab everything absolutely correct. You, yes, this okay. is just the first part of that process, and it is a very rigorous process very with rigorous. good reason. With with good reason, <laughs> and it should be. Um, but that's why you don't see a lot of home child cares opening days because the process is so rigorous. I did it when I was in my 20s. I am no longer in my 20s. It was nothing like this today, but it is a good. It is a good thing. So, okay, commissioners. Do we have anybody? Mr. Spadafora? Uh, good evening, Mrs. War Ms. Warwick. Good evening. Um, apart from the requirements from uh, the state of Michigan um, and with your uh, clients, you know, your families with their children, entrusting them in your care, I need to ask you a question as far as what type of insurance you have in the, you know, God forbid, event that there's an accident or something like that and the child is injured. Um, our homeowners has a special rider on it for um, for any incidences per child. I don't have the exact numbers. I consulted our insurance uh, gentleman for that. Um, I didn't bring them tonight prepared, but it, there is a special rider on our insurance to cover any incidences that would be towards the children in the home outside of my own. So that would be a rider to your personal policy, right? While right. conducting a commercial business right okay. right the business in the home is how it's listed business in the mm -hmm. home all right um have you had any neighbors uh comment or any problems with the, the surrounding neighbors obviously this um facility it looks like it was it's a residential it was probably built originally as a residential home in a residential neighborhood and looking at your uh plan you know inside it, you've obviously converted it for commercial use. So with that, looking to run it full time as facil as that facility, that's just, uh, that particular uh, facility is only open during the hours that you state, and there's no one there um, at night, is that correct? Correct, it's 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, it is just our normal home. Uh, we just have converted the basement, so it is, everything is set up for use in the basement. Um, our parents come in through the garage. I have a doorbell set up. They ring the doorbell. They come in through the garage. They come down the stairs. They drop their children off. They leave. They exit and enter through the garage. Again, they do park in the driveway. They don't park in the streets. Um, as stated, I have about four families right now. And with my staff, we've already discussed if the approval goes through for the 12 we're not looking to take on more children per se it's just as i explained it's for 
leniency for the families that are already there. So it's it's not to pack out our residents with 12 children on a daily basis. It's really just to give flexibility. I, I haven't had any complaints from any of my neighbors. Again, I've waved to you know, those in the subdivision walking and everybody kind of gets a chuckle out of seeing the six passenger stroller. They all think that's kind of funny. But I do see my neighbors here, so I'm sure if they have a comment, they'll address it. But um, I haven't had any issues so far with anyone saying anything. I do stand corrected. I, uh, you, you and your family also reside in that home yes, as well? Yes, we do. Too? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because when I looked at a plan, maybe I didn't look at it carefully <laughs> enough. It just yes. looked like a commercial uh, facility within a residential <laughs> uh, dwelling. Then our architect did a good, did a good job. <laughs> okay. Um, with your hours of operation then as far as if you have up to the capacity of 12 do you an, uh, anticipate is it mostly uh, drop off and then drive onward or will the parents or guardians of the children that are dropped off stay at any particular point that they, could they, pose a potential they, you know, they issue don't. of parking the neighborhood they don't mostly I mean unless it's a quick synopsis of the day if they ask general questions about the child's behavior in the day activities whatever so maybe it's a five to ten minute conversation and especially if there is something they need to discuss but um, some of the children that come I even transport myself so their parents I pick up and drop off so th again the traffic is minimal right now I don't foresee it being uh, increased in the future because again I'm not looking to really use the license for 12 children I'm looking to use it for the flexibility so but with that flexibility you would be able yes though, I to would be yes I would up to 12 mm -hmm. okay okay thank you that's all I have for now thank you Mr. Spanaforo is there anyone else that has a comment to the Mr. Oliver no I I see little cradles there will you have do you have infants or I do not I currently only take one years old and up I can, but I, it's a personal choice not to. So, so as you're, let's just say you get up to six or seven, you're gonna have to bring more staff on. And what's I your have, ratio? I ha well, for seven children and up, you need two staff at all time. I currently have two additional staff members, including myself, which I am always full time there. Other than if I have to step out for an issue, but then I always have my two staff members there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Oliver. Anyone else? <clears throat> I held, only had one. Go kind ahead. of an administrative. In our packet, uh, your license uh, mm -hmm. was for six. It and is. you're applying for, uh, depending on what happens, I guess, tonight. Um, but that that expiration is, it has, has passed. So uh, are you reapplying for the six? I have an updated one. I sent this packet in months ago, so you know it took time to get on the docket and all. Okay. So yes, I have a current and updated license that's good for two years for the six children right now. Okay. Which I can happily provide proof of. So the state requirements uh, between the, the one to six and seven to 12, uh, <coughs> the differences, uh, as you mentioned, you need two uh, adults um, up to 12. Anything past six children, you you have to have two staff members or two, two <clears throat> adults present at all times. And for egress out of that basement, I see that there is an, uh, an exit uh, access window. Mm -hmm. um, and is that, um, is that the primary means of egress out of that basement if something were to happen or the stairs? Because um, well, I don't know where they lead to. But Yeah, well, the, the stairs lead directly to the garage and out, which is where the parents enter and exit. They come directly through the garage. But the egress is also on that south wall. So they're basically function as two emergency exits. You could use the stairs in case of a fire or an emergency or the egress window if the stairs were, you know, compromised. And the, the gate for the fence that in, encloses uh, them. Mm -hmm. Is there only one gate? There's two gates, and I typically keep them locked with I have a key. And then if parents are picking up, then I open the gate for them. But usually the gates are locked with a, with a you know, regular master lock. So for state requirement or, or for fire, is there any requirement that there be some way that if there was an emergency, they can... <laughs> they can get out or you can lead them out without 
having a key uh, to get out of that fenced in area if, if they have to uh, leave out of the exit window um, if they leave out of the exit window it's not in the backyard it's in front of the gate so it's actually on the side of the house before the gate is so it it's not the walkway to the backyard is gated but the window is right before the gate if that makes sense so if you left the egress window you wouldn't be in the backyard you'd be on the side of the house so in the case of an emergency they would line up against the fence we actually do practice tornado drills and fire drills once every three months um, and they have we have a little emergency plan they would line up against the fence by the neighbor's house um, if there was a fire that was you know quite large you know we could move you know further towards the street but obviously with little ones you just want to make sure that everybody's corralled so but it yeah the, the backyard is not um, part of the egress window so it's in okay. front of I couldn't tell that from the sketch that was done uh, okay. of the backyard <laughs> uh, it looked like the gate or the fence went all the way from corner to corner of the house that back uh, that uh, yeah it's behind the it. house so you're saying it's just partial right right okay um, that's all I have. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Bailey. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Do we have a motion? Okay. Mr. We, Chairman, you need to. Oh, public hearing. I was trying really hard not to do this tonight. <laughs> I'd like to uh, have a motion. So moved. To open the public hearing. Motion by Mr. Oliver, seconded by Mr. Shudo. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. What time? And it is 718. I'm just going to go by the clock that's sitting here. Um, if you'd like to address the, the Planning Commission with concerns on this item, you're invited to come up. And once again, you have a four minute time limit. So, is there anyone that would like to speak? Come on up, sir. Please state your name and address for us. Uh, my name is Mark Wensink. Uh, and uh, my wife and I reside at 54618 Laurel. Uh, we're neighbors of. Uh, Jim and Laura Warwick, and they're a wonderful couple. And I have nothing against children, but can anybody hear me? I don't know if I'm close enough. Okay. Yep, you're doing fine. Yeah, uh, we are. It's it's already. It's not loud now, guys. In my backyard, the weather's nice. Um, when these children are there, they play all day long, and kids are kids. I've got a granddaughter that I took to Beck, and I know when I took her to Beck when we were raising her, and there'd be 10, 12, 8, maybe 20 kids, maybe only 6, 7, 9, 10. They're, they're loud. Children are children. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's our main concern. Um, we oppose it for that reason. Not that reason only. I don't know what would happen in resale someday. I mean, we always thought we, when we had this house built in 1997, that uh, it finally became a real quiet neighborhood because the kids grew up and they've gone off to college and what have it and making their own lives. But then other children, you know, life goes on. But it's still a quiet neighborhood. But um, where I'm at, um, and right now there are, I think, I only see four children. And they're pretty, pretty quiet. And they're well taken care of, these seem to be. But uh, our issue is going to be in the future if this goes through, then we no longer have a say in any more than I'd say six. They make a lot of noise. There's no way you could sit there and relax in your yard or it's, it's, it's quite, it would be quite bothersome. And then I didn't, like I say, I don't know if I, who I potential buyers I might lose in the future. My wife and I are thinking about retiring because we're still working, we're getting up in age, but then I've got you know, there's people that aren't going to want to move next to a daycare. It's almost like a miniature elementary school when these kids are all playing and having fun because they provide all the, all the nice equipment for them. They're having a blast. They're running around. They're playing with the dog. It's wonderful to see. But it's, it, you know, I, I don't like to say it, but it's, I think it would become quite annoying. Mm. Um, and that's about all I can say about it but that's a, that's our feelings and I appreciate you uh, hearing us out thank you sir thank you <clears throat> anyone else anyone 
All right. Well, it's 721, and I need a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Support. Motion by Mr. Spadafora, seconded by Mr. Oliver. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Do we have any other comments from commissioners? Mr. Chairman, just to Mr. Box, and I should have gone through and checked this, my apologies, but I know with our commercial special land uses, we have a list of standards for special land use, not more disruptive than normal. You know, there's, there's a list of seven or so of them. Do we have any specific uh, standards for special land use with regards to a, a special land use with residential? I believe this is one of the only ones, special land uses with regards to residential. Do we have a standard? Uh, this is one of the only ones we allow, you're correct. Um, the only ones that, that we have is, is the fencing uh, for the rear yard. Um, the state requires outdoor play area, so we require that to be fenced in, which is the case here. So as far as the special land use uh, goes here, we don't have subjective qualifications, we have specific qualifications. Correct. And in this case, they've met the specific qualifications. Correct. Okay. Because obviously, as the gentleman mentioned, uh, it can get noisier, it can get busier, but if we don't have the standards there. Yeah, I mean, we, the township does have a standard noise ordinance. I, I don't have that in front of me uh, to, to read that to you, but there, you know, if, if noise became a problem, I'm sure that, you know, we can address that, that at that time. Um, how does the uh, how does the the ordinance with regards to uh, in-home businesses apply? Does it have any bearing? I know that has ver verbiage of not more than standard uh, traffic to the home. It right, does then. have restrictions, I think, to 200 square feet, but there is some specific, some traffic verbiage. Does that apply here at all? Yeah, it would be considered a home occupation, so not any more. You can't be producing more traffic on a residential street than would normally be expected on a residential street. Um, and not necessarily the house, but to the street itself. To the street itself. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I might have other comments here, but uh, as I'm checking with Mr. Box, I, it seems to me that uh, some of the more subjective things that I would have probably don't come into play here with our restrictions, so I will leave those comments be. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Spadafora. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> if um, Mr. Box or maybe Mr. Aloya could answer this too, as it may pertain to this question in the ordinance, if the activity ever ceases to expire, does the special land use then terminate or would it run with the land being this is in a, re a residential R1 zone Site plan. with, you know, with a, as a single family residence and other more predominant circumstances? So the, the special land use does run with the land. However, this is largely still overseen by the state of Michigan. So uh, if, if the petitioner were to move away uh, in order for the next resident to take advantage of the special land use, they would need to be licensed themselves. Yeah. And if they weren't and wanted to just perhaps purchase the home because of its residential neighborhood uh, characteristic, then uh, would that special land use would cease and uh, it would just go back to a, a normal uh, well, they could, usage. They could use it as, as a regular. all contained within the R1 zoning. Correct. They could as use a it as a regular dwelling. residential okay. house. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? All right. Do we have a motion on this item? Chairman, if there's no further discussion, I'd like to make a motion to approve the special land use for permanent parcel 08071310005. Um, uh, the special land use to allow the child care of greater than six and up to 12 children. And this would be based upon the petitioner meeting all um, applicable um, restrictions within the ordinance. Okay. Motion made by Mr. Tuckfield. Support. Supported by Mr. Oliver. Mr. Bentley, please call the roll. Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Tuckfield. Yes. Mr. Oliver. Yes. Mr. Bentley. Yes. Mr. Hardy. Yes. Mr. Provost, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Schuto. No. And Mr. Spadafora. Yes. Okay. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Let's move on to the next item. Amendment to the Township of Macomb Zoning Ordinance 10.2403-C-2, a technical change. Mr. Box. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Commission. Um, uh, you should all be aware, I'm sure, of uh, the, the ability to go through the technical change process. Uh, once we have any approved plans, be that a site plan or, or a subdivision, um, we do have the ability to go through what's called a technical change. These are minor items. Um, some of the common ones we see are, uh, you know, a sidewalk needs to be shifted because another utility is in the area. Um, minor enough that <coughs> We don't come back to planning commission uh, for that, those items that are just approved administratively. Um, that being said, the current ordinance, uh, the way it reads, uh, there's four requirements as you see behind you. Um, we've had a few, as you may remember, just in the past year or so, items that technically would violate one of those, so we had to come through the, the um, revised site plan as opposed to the technical change. Uh, one example being uh, 23 mile moved uh, the construction on 23 the county decided to move the location of where they had allowed a driveway for a business because the driveway moved they had to revise their site plan but because it changed vehicular circulation it didn't meet the requirement of a technical change even though it was very very minor uh, essentially sliding the driveway over and flip-flopping a few parking spaces we were required to come through the Planning Commission process. Um, that being said, uh, we have some proposed revised changes to that language, uh, which I think you all have a, an updated version of in front of you. It was on your desk when you got here this evening. Uh, but essentially, it, it's the statement here that would, would govern um, in lieu of those, those four items that were listed previously. Um, but essentially the previous version, uh, any technical change w required unanimous agreement from the technical committee. This would still require the same unanimous agreement to, to be deemed that it, it fits the requirement of a technical change and then approved by that technical committee. Okay, thank you. Commissioner, do you have anything you'd like to share? Mr. Box, could you, uh, Turn that slide back to your summary of the, of the four points again real quick. Sure. And, and you may have said this, but I was going through finding my notes, so I just wanted to, to verify. So can you give us an example of where four might come into play? The addition, addition of units or, or change of density? Sure. So if, if we have an approved site plan for a, uh, you know, a site condo, a, a developer comes in and shows you a site plan that goes through the process gets approved with say 80 residential lots that will be developed uh, and they make some changes to their site plan and it becomes 81 lots that increases the intensity so it, that would under the current language would not allow for a technical change so I haven't read this I didn't I obviously I hadn't seen it until tonight I personally don't have an issue with one unit changing but um, if it's just changing I suppose without more boundaries that could be changing of 50% 100% I, I don't know what the changes are does this language do you feel this limits it to a percentage or anything different or is it just density changes could be considered a technical change yeah so it does limit it to uh, minor changes as based on the standard uh, I think that's right at the, the bottom of your first page there and at the top of the second um, where it defines within the ordinance um, what a, a minor change would be. So that again, you know, minor dimensional changes, um, landscaping improvements, a, cha a slight change in the parking lot, uh, moving, you know, parking spaces around. Um, often we see, uh, especially with commercial developments, uh, that they, for one reason or another, need to move uh, some mechanical equipment from one one side of the building to the other side. Um, minor minor changes of that nature. And and just to just to reiterate, I don't have a problem with minor changes. My only concern here would be that minor is <coughs> fully enough defined. I, I you know we've we've worked with you and Mr. Skirto now. I, I feel pretty confident in your definition of minor. Uh, but I've seen multiple planning uh, directors over the year, and if we leave years, and if we leave language in that's minor, um, and someone else is abusing it, that would be my concern. So uh, that that would be my only comment with the language. If, if maybe we can put, and maybe Mr. Aloya can speak to this, maybe something to to 
Maybe define minor. It does. It, it defines technical change as a minor revision to an approved plan that does not change the character, nature, intent, or use of the original plan. So if the lots in a site condo were proposed at 50 units mm -hmm. and it was changed to 100 units, it would still be a site condo. It still might be within the usage. Mm -hmm. um, would it be defined as a minor? Couldn't it be construed as minor under that definition? Well, I, I don't think so because I think if you're adding 100 units, you're adding roads, you're adding other aspects of the site plan which would not be considered minor. So normally you're going to see something like there is an, an extra space for a lot. They've moved something around, but it doesn't change the utilities. It doesn't change the roads. It doesn't change the setbacks. It doesn't change the character or nature of the site plan. So <clears throat> I think that's an extreme example that you're giving, but I don't think that that fits within this defi definition. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Leah. Mm -hmm. I would just say that that's generally my concern. Obviously, uh, I, I think I follow your logic here. I, I still would be concerned about it. but I, I, uh, I understand, and I think the intent here is for minor issues not to clog up the Planning Commission's docket. And, and I fully support that. There's been multiple times in the past before Mr. Skirto and Mr. Box were here where I've tried to push <coughs> things to technical changes because it makes more sense as long as they are, in fact, technical changes. It, and my experience with <coughs> this is actually more in other municipalities we're on the other side of the table. I've made the argument, this is a technical change, and it's been taken that this was a technical change when if I was on the planning commission, I'd have been, that's not really a technical change. So I, I've seen it happen. I know it can happen. I just, I, I'd like to, to protect us in the future. So. And, and I think that the intent also is that our administration spends a tremendous amount of time uh, to follow the formal process when there is a minor revision uh, when we can go through the technical change process and save township resources by doing so. And and I would thoroughly applaud uh, you and the administration for doing that. We've seen evidence in that. It's been a new administration. However, as I mentioned to Mr. Box, I've seen uh, multiple administrations, and I'm more concerned about future unknown administrations that may not be quite as um, as good with the, the township responsibility as this one might be. Fair enough. Thank you. All right. Anyone else? I think um, uh, in response, I guess my response to that, too, is we have a technical committee uh, uh, in accordance with this uh, that um, is comprised of the township planner, the building official, and township engineer, and other departments as necessary. So if it became to them something more than just minor, um, then it would revert back. So I think it's a good check and balance. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Bentley. All right. I need a motion to open the public portion at 734. So moved. Motion by Mr. Oliver. Second. Seconded by Mr. Spadafora. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. If anybody would like to speak on this topic, please come to the podium. Hey, remember, you have four minutes. Come on up, sir. State your name and address, and you have a time limit of four minutes. My name is uh, Greg Tavalier. I live at 49754 Thunder Bay Circle North. Um, I didn't come for uh, this part of the uh, proceedings, but uh, I would agree that uh, the language is incredibly vague. And I would also like, uh, you know, what is the definition of a technicality? Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Anyone else that would like to speak? <coughs> come on up. Anyone? Sure. State your name and address for us. Brenda Baker, 49689. Can't even think of my address. I'm so nervous. It's Lakewood. I didn't come for this section either, but I fully support, and I can't, I don't have my distance glasses on, so I can't see his name next to you, sir. Mr. Tuckfield. Okay, well, <coughs> yes, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. my, my name is Aaron Tuckfield. I fully support what he said. Um, you have no idea what's going to happen in the future, and if 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 and I heard I and I respect respectfully um, respect your opinions, but I heard if five times. If, and um, you just I, I support his his position because of that, because if no one has yet defined what the technical specifically term is, so thank you. Thank you, sir. 
All right. Anyone else? Anyone else would like to speak? All right. Then I need a motion to close the public hearing at 736. So moved. Motion by Mr. Shudo. Support. Supported by Mr. Tuckfield. All in favor? Aye. Motion passes. <clears throat> All right, folks. Do we have a motion on this item? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Oliver. I move we amend the uh, technical change, uh, ordinance number 10.2403-C-2. Okay, motion by Mr. Oliver. Do we have support? Support, support. by Mr. Shudo. Mr. Tuck, or Mr. Tuckfield. Mr. Bentley, would you please call the roll? Yes. Uh, Mr. Oliver. Yes. Mr. Shudo. Yes. Mr. Hardy. Yes. Mr. Spadafora. Yes. Mr. Bentley. Yes. Mr. Tuckfield. No. Okay. Motion passes. All right, next item on our list is uh, rezoning, <clears throat> mass rezoning. Residential one family suburban R1S to residential one family urban R1, located in parts of section 12, 13, 23, 24, 26. The Comb Township petitioner, Mr. Box. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Commission. Uh, I know you folks have all seen these slides as this is the second phase of, of this, uh, but I will go through them again. A lot of the public is, this will be the first time they're seeing it. So what we're doing here, I'm going to try to break it down, what we're doing and why we're doing it. So what we're doing here is essentially this. We're getting rid of the R1S uh, zoning category. Why we're doing it. It does not match the current 2008 master plan, and it will not match the current uh, draft of the Cultivate Macomb master plan. Uh, R1S minimum requirement is 30,000 square foot lots, which is 1.45 units per acre. The lowest density allowed according to the current master plan is two units per acre. Uh, that, that conflict could cause problems in the future. It, it sets the township up, at, you know, being liable to have lawsuits with, if developers come in and attempt to build uh, two units per acre, yet the, the zoning doesn't allow for that in R1S. Uh, this change will allow with, for conformity between the zoning code and the master plan, both the current master plan and, and the new one uh, that uh, we're working on at this time. So as I said, there, there are six phases. We've already had phase one. Uh, that was the area in red you see up there. Uh, today is, is phase two. Um, Again, they're all R1S to R1. Uh, phases one through four will all be R1S to R1. Phases five and six are R1S to other more appropriate zoning categories based on their locations. So all the parcels included uh, in phase two, are, again, are shown here. I think you all have a list of the parcels uh, in front of you, the parcel ID numbers, um, but they are largely uh, around the North Avenue corridor. Uh, the, the zoning change from R1S to R1, um, it does allow three units per acre rather than the 1.45 or two units, depending on which, if you're looking at the zoning ordinance or the master plan. Um, and it reduces the, the required distance for street frontage. However, it does not require anybody to build additional density, build more houses. Everyone can continue living the way they're living. Um, it will not affect taxes. Taxes are based on use. The, the land is already used as residential. Uh, any split zoned parcel that has R1S and another zone will be rezoned in its entirety. We have a few split zoned ones that we're gonna clean up as well. This is an issue that goes back again, as I said, to 2008. So a lot of this is just cleanup work that should have been done years ago to address this issue. And we're going through now and doing that. Um, and, and by rezoning these from R1S to R1, it will not prevent any landowners from seeking other zones in the future if they decide to do that. Um, there are other zoning categories they may feel that they align with uh, better. They, they have, there's no restrictions preventing them from rezoning in the future. So, and at this time, the staff is, is recommending approval of all the parcels within phase two. Okay. 
Uh, Mr. Viviana, do we count you as a petitioner or do we count Mr. Box as a petitioner? I'm going to let Mr. Box handle this one. Okay, that's what I thought. All right, nothing else to add, Mr. Box? Not at this time. Okay. Commissioners, any comments? A question. Uh, what is uh, the zoning for uh, two units per acre? R1E. R1E yeah. would allow two units per acre if uh, water and sewer were available. If, if not, those would also require larger lots. And uh, the R1 zoning, uh, could you explain to for, for everyone uh, the differences there? Uh, rather than a straight, uh, you know, uh, uh, three units per acre, uh, that also is dependent upon services. Is that correct? Could you ex yeah, could so you expand on that? Yeah, go ahead, Dave. Yeah, sure, Mr. <coughs> Bentley. Right now, if uh, sewer is available. Uh, in an R1 district, uh, the minimum lot size, I believe it's around 8,400 square foot per lot. If sewer is not available to the site, the minimum lot size is over 14,000 square feet per lot. Um, if that helps out, would that answer your question? Um, yes. Is that only related to sewer? Is that the 14th? Uh, for water? Oh, yeah, it would be water too, but primarily it's always it's a sewer because that's a, the definition between when you have to start a septic system and the minimum size for a septic field on a residential property. Okay. Is that 14,000 odd feet? No. Was there any uh, in the R1S, was there any restriction as well? I think you had mentioned it, Mr. Box, uh, um, uh, that. Uh, it was a 1.45 per acre, but that was um, with uh, with storm. Is that correct? Or with that was with water and sewer. With water, that's correct. Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Bentley. Anyone else? Yes, uh, Mr. Box. Um, I got a great deal of questions uh, for this offline after uh, after the last meeting. Um, probably very similar ones to the ones you've been getting um, as notices are going out. I, I guess there's two things that I just want to highlight and maybe ask the specific question. Probably the biggest concern is about traffic. We hear about traffic quite a bit. Uh, that This is potentially going to, to generate traffic. Um, I guess maybe a, a broad question about master plan usage. Um, in traffic planning, the master plan is the main document that's used to understand future traffic patterns by funding agencies. Is that generally accurate? For the most part, I would say, yeah. And, and our master plan as it's existing, the 2008 master plan did not have this zoning as a, it, that's why we're, one of the reasons we're here tonight, it did not anticipate this zoning. Uh, correct. That, that's correct. So would it be fair to say that, that a, a full reading of the master plan would have already indicated that these would have to be rezoned at some point in the future? Absolutely. Yes. So. Uh, to the people who are concerned about traffic, obviously it's understood, but this is already, to, to the way we would normally do this, this has already been part of the plan as far as traffic is concerned since 2008. We're only following up on That's it That's correct. We're, we're cleaning up something that should have been done in 2008. Okay, very good. And Mr. Chairman, I just may, I'll, I'll make the comment now instead of maybe later. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm not sure that I particularly uh, like when we're doing it. I think we talked about this with Mr. Box uh, last meeting. Um, but all that said, if, if all of these uh, landowners came and requested R1, we would say yes, because it, it is almost required of us by the master plan. So regardless of who's applying for it, I think it makes sense. And at the end of the day, we're doing what we generally do elsewhere. The master plan is, is basically saying this is something that we're going to do, and we're, we're following the master plan. So um, that would be my only comment. Um, I've had heard a lot of comments about traffic and density and, and uh uh, we we have a master plan for a reason and we're here following it so okay no thank you mr tuckfield anyone else oh go ahead mr chairman i guess while it was brought up traffic um could uh mr box you speak on uh traffic and uh and uh our uh our involvement uh as a as a planning commission um or uh, 
or where our hands are tied as far as tra traffic is concerned and then how the Department of Roads uh, enters into that for uh, all future uh, circulation issues uh, within the within the county. Yeah, so we, as you say, uh, the county Department of Roads controls the roads. You know, they, they can approve or deny, you know, driveway access for new developments. Um, but they also review, just as we review new developments, uh, whether that's a, a residential development or a commercial development, industrial development, just as we review them, they review them as well. Uh, and, and because they control the, the roads, they may require some mitigation measures by the developer. So if they feel it's gonna produce more traffic than what can be handled, they can require that development to pay for a bypass lane near a driveway or to, to widen a certain section of the road. Um, they do have that ability. And they're in charge of that, That's correct. correct. Not us. <clears throat> correct. Okay. Is it, is, it, uh, is it correct to assume that they also monitor? Uh, we, we've had letters submitted um, uh, same letter basically, but the same concern uh, and, and primarily from the same uh, subdivisions. But uh, certainly it is an issue at certain times and, and I know that's exasperated by uh, 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 the, the work, the road work on uh, Hall Road 23, uh, tw 24, uh, 25. Yeah. Um, uh, a, a lot of different uh, uh, different projects going on, and we're seeing traffic we usually don't see. Uh, I, I live on North Avenue, so I, I'm well aware of, uh, of that. Um, but uh, is that something that they uh, are responsible to monitor as well, and uh, basically they're not going to build a road to, uh, a wide road to nowhere. They're going to uh, widen it uh, as they see a consistent um, uh, issue that uh, needs to be addressed and, and, and monies are available, I guess. Yes, that's right. And yes, we're, right now it's difficult to, to look at traffic and, and tell where traffic is coming from or going to because of all the construction with Hall Road and as you said, uh, you know, all the other places around 23, uh, around the township and around the region that are under construction, it's kind of creating some traffic patterns we're not used to typically seeing. Um, but they do monitor the traffic, uh, and I think even when they go through construction process, uh, they anticipate where traffic is likely to go, if they're gonna cut through certain side streets, or you know, j just where that, they model that out where they assume traffic is gonna go and make sure those streets can handle that. Um, and they do have a large traffic operation center um, at the county facility um, that is, is manned 24 hours a day. Uh, so they're, they're constantly watching the roads, uh, but you're right, they're not gonna widen a road to nowhere, uh, but they also are going to look at what traffic levels the roads as built can handle. Uh, they, they often use terms called level of service. So there's there's A through E and, and, and there's formulas in there uh, and they figure out how that road is operating, what level of service is it currently operating at, and they have thresholds uh, where if it gets too low, then mitigation measures are required. Okay. Um, I appreciate that. Thank you for the, um, for the input. All right, thank you, Mr. Bentley. Anyone else? All right, then I need a motion to open this to the public at 7.50. Anyone want to make the motion? So moved. Motion by Mr. Oliver. Second. Supported by Mr. Spadafora. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, motion to open the public <coughs> is passed. Is there anyone here that would like to speak? Please come up. Once again, name and address first. And you have four minutes. Thank you. I'm Paula Weeblehouse. I live at 51 370 North Avenue. And um, my property is in section 13. Um, I have a couple questions. So um, I'm going to assume that because I already have a pole bar and I'm grandfathered in, that makes logical sense. And I did read through some of it. So I understand that the rezoning means that you can't put another structure um, in an area where you had three houses, if I, if I read it correctly. So maybe someone could clarify that. Um, I'm also going to assume that if I have livestock that I would not have to remove it. So I'd like you to address that. And uh, I have bees. I have three hives currently and I wanna make sure that I don't have to move them. 
Um, and then I'd also like to know if the property has been sold or is being considered to be developed that's behind me, if that's something that you can share with us. Um, and uh, let's see. And then the area that's in white, that's at section 13 at the bottom and section 24, that would be like where Tina's is, and then there's you know residential houses on the corner. Can you clarify what that is zoned right now? And that's it for me. All Thank right. you. Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else? Come on up. Brenda Baker, 49689 Lakewood, again. Um, I wrote some questions down, and we only have four minutes, so I'm going to basically tell you the questions I have, and then you can just address them afterwards. Unfortunately, some of the answers would help me with some of the questions, but we don't get them answered now, so I understand that. Um, I did want to comment on this. If I don't understand it, which I'm sure I don't understand all this stuff, but there was a quick discussion about R1E fulfilling the requirement for two houses per acre. And if that's, and because in the problem was that 1.45 was, was all that was available for the acre now. But instead of going from, okay, then instead of going from R1E to residential urban, why aren't we going to R1E to get up to the two lots that we said we wanted on an acre? And if that's confusing, I, I hope not, but that's, it, I was confused when I heard it. Um, on the map that we did get as homeowners, there was no display of the street, so we have no idea really how far these areas encompass. I'm looking at section 24 or over there and down at the south part of that, the um, line there at section 24. Where does that cut off? We don't have a 22 and a half mile, but that, does that cut off where the wetlands are? Does that cut off just above sandstone at the retreat? I am in Sandstone at the Retreat. In fact, I'm on the board at the Sandstone at the Retreat. And there's been a lot of discussion. People are wondering, what are we doing this for? Why are we doing this? And the answer, going back to 2000, a 2008 plan, OK, that's fine. But that, and that's, that brings up a tra the traffic question again. But I'll leave that for right now. So the question that I have is, where does it begin on that border? Does it start at that southern border of Section 24 that's darkened out? because that would be my house right there just about. There's some wetlands there. There are wetlands along North Avenue, and there are wetlands going across somewhere. And see, that's why, because I can't figure out where it is. I don't know where the eastern wetlands are that, that hug sandstone at the retreat. Now, my understanding with wetlands is you can't go into the wetland. We can't even cut a tree down unless it's a danger to the home that it's near. So I'm wondering, are we doing anything with the wetlands? Are we talking about the area above the wetlands, which is Bella Woods, and is Bella Woods selling property to be developed up there? These are just all the questions that the whole community has and concern that they have. Um, residential urban, does that mean, and these are just my questions, residential urban, does that mean in layman's terms that there'll be apartments, condos, or you know, multi-units? Um, is there a percentage, second question on that regard, is there a percent of residences that must be lower income to develop any big area there? Um, what does this change mean for taxes? Now, I wrote down that someone said it's used as residential. There won't be any change in taxes, but it's the, it, it is residential, but it's also going to be urban. So does that change the taxes for the people that live there right now? I, anytime you go to a city, the taxes are going to change. And yeah, I know it's not a minute. Thank minute. you. Anytime it is something more developed and urbanized, then that does affect taxes as far as I understand. And I did have this. What discussion have you guys, excuse me, not you guys, you gentlemen, have in regards to uh, traffic? Now, the only comment I have is, well, it's been a plan since 2008. Since 2008, I've lived there since 2016. And we have developed into 400 and 80 something or 35 something, over 400 plus units in the sandstone keystone featherstone area we've developed an apartment complex just south of 22 mile legacy has been built up some more we've expanded on the legacy that sets to the east of sandstone so the question i have is nothing's been done with the roads or traffic up to that point all right thank you very much ma'am i think you had your hand up back there come on up My, 
<clears throat> excuse me, my name is Audrey Bondar, 49868 Muskegon River Drive. <clears throat> and I'd like to, I'm learning as I'm listening today. And um, when you talk about traffic, um, she talked about the increase in density. And my concern is that if it's going to accelerate at that rate, and you're talking about monitoring North Avenue, um, North Avenue was terrible last summer before the 23 mile road, before all the construction on Hall Road. So it's made worse, but it's only two lanes. There's no left turn lane. There's no way to, to get around people. Try to go through there on um, rush hour because it's next to impossible to make a left out of my complex. And so I'm, my concern is how often do they monitor at what time of day? And then my other concern has to do with um, some things that were addressed as far as sewage. Um, when were the main lines put in that these uh, units would feed into? And what were the standards at the time? When I consider all the things that have happened in Detroit and they talked about the overflow and what the standards were at the time when they were constructed and the fact that we're getting two to four inches in three days today is not not what we would have considered normal 10 years ago. So how is that going to be addressed and how are things gonna be looked at, um, at within those, those parameters, that type of thing? So those are my questions. Okay, thank, thank you, you. ma'am. Anyone else? Come on up, sir. Well, they got, I got the gentleman in the back. All right, go ahead, come on up. My name is Sebastian Mosheri. I live at 49128 Weyburn Drive uh, in the retreat subdivision. And talking about traffic, I've been living there since 2007 and traffic on North Avenue is horrible. Anybody who lives on North Avenue knows that. It's almost impossible in high uh, traffic time, uh, back and forth to work, people are you know, going back and forth to work. You, you can't get out, can't make a turn, left turn, on, uh, for, on the corner of 22 Mile and North Avenue. It's been like that for years. And if you guys approve this, it's gonna get worse. We're gonna need a light at that corner. Can't barely get out now sometimes, okay? And the next question I have as far as these uh, going to urban and going to, uh, is any of these gonna be rental units that they're gonna be building out there? Why they got to change to urban? Why can't it stay suburban? Why has it got to be urban? Is there a particular reason for that? Once again, all the answers, or Mr. Box will comment at the end. Come on up, sir. Uh, my name's Don Macios. I live at 49549 Sable Creek Drive. Um, I hate to keep going on and on about traffic, and I'm, I'm not really going to, but I mean, this is very high density housing, and there, all of that, just about all of it, you have no other way to go but North Avenue. There's 22 mile road that shouldn't even be called a mile road because it goes nowhere. So I know if it's not you guys that do the roads, and you say, well, you know, sorry, you know, it's not us, but it is you right now making a decision that is gonna greatly affect the roads. And then I don't know what about the uh, water drainage. I know my sump pump runs um, a lot, 24 seven. I mean, not all the time, but I mean, it's always running, always running, whether it's raining or not running. So I don't know if that's gonna be a problem or not either. But anyway, sorry, that's a traffic thing. <laughs> Thank you very much. Anyone else? All right, at eight o'clock, I'd like to close the public portion. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion by Mr. Shudo. Support. Supported by Mr. Tuckfield. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. <clears throat> All right, Mr. Box, you wanna address some of our citizens? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'll do my best. I was trying to jot all these questions down. I'll do my, my best to answer them. Uh, with regards to development, there, we're not proposing any development. No developers have reached out to build on these properties. 
Um, none of them up there, I don't believe, are, are site plans that have been in front of you uh, any time recently. Um, this was not spurred by any development. This was simply to align the ordinance with the master plan. Um, you know, it puts the township at some, some liability issues there. We're, we're cleaning that up again. It should have been done when the master plan of 2008 was approved. This should have been taken care of then. Uh, some of the questions uh, with regard to, to livestock, or, or I think she said she had some, some honeybees. Um, and anything that's existing now would be grandfathered in. You, you can continue living as is. We're not asking people to tear down their chicken coops or anything of that nature. Any, anything that you have now can continue. Um, I think the question was asked, the area where it says section 24 up there where Tina's and, and part of Bella Woods, uh, that is already our one. That's why it's not part of this process. Uh, I think a couple of those parcels are actually commercial, but uh, the, the western half of Bella Woods is already our one. That's why it's not part of this process. <clears throat> Accessory structures, the size, the number of accessory structures is based on the size of your property. Uh, there's a chart, a table in our ordinance. The same table applies to R1S as does R1 and R1E. Um, and with regards to R1E, that, that question came up. Much of the R1E, which there are some that are going to go from R1S to R1E, uh, they'll be in one of the later phases. Again, it's it's to match the 2008 master plan. The, the ones that are going to R1 are because they were essentially deemed R1 density in, our, in the 2008 master plan. Uh, as far as where does the development begin and end? So they're all parcel as a whole. So um, the, the wetlands question, I, I'm not sure exactly where she's talking about, um, but if there's wetlands there, that likely means it can't be built on or, or would be very difficult to be built on. But the, pro the property still has to have a zoning category, uh, and it needs, still needs to match the master plan. Um, urban is just, uh, we, we've got this question a lot over the last few weeks. It's just a term that was assigned. It has nothing to do with proximity to any part of the metro area. Uh, it, it was a term that was created probably in the 70s or 80s uh, to be attached to these zoning categories. It, it's strictly three units per acre, residential, R1, urban. Um, it does not mean that there's any requirements for low income. There's no rentals, you know, it doesn't require rentals, the, any of that uh, stuff. It, it's not required for our, for R1. Uh, we're not proposing any of that. We're not expecting any of that to come forward at this time. Uh, again, taxes. So it, it's based on my understanding and, and discussing with the assessor's department who sets the tax rate. Uh, it, it's based on the use. So if you're already living in a residential dwelling it's going to be continue being taxed as such if a landowner in one of these properties decides to split off a piece and, and build another house then that house will be taxed as well separately uh, if you want to build a pole barn again going back to the chart that's allowed your taxes might go up because you built a pole barn but not because of what zone it's in if it's if it's zoned as residential it's going to continue to be taxed as residential um, I think we've talked a lot about traffic um, it, you know, a lot of the traffic does originate from some of the higher density developments that, that already exist, and I think a lot of the folks here live in those higher density areas. We're not, we're not dent, uh, you know, increasing density to that level in any of these pieces. It's three units per acre. M many of those are, are four or five or six units per acre. I think the, the one individual mentioned uh, 400 units. Um, that's a lot of the traffic is coming from those 600 units. We're not increasing traffic with a rezoning. Nobody has come forward to develop, to build even a single more house uh, based on this at this point. Um, the sewage, so the, the sewage and sanitary um, storms, uh, again, it's all going back to the 2008 master plan. Um, I know the engineering department looked at what was proposed then. As development has taken place, pipes that are put into the ground are, are done so accordingly, assuming one day that those parcels may be developed as such. Um, I, I think they also incorporated looking at where wetlands are and, and where they're not and just how much of pieces might actually be able to be developed. Uh, and and if, if further development happens, the, the, I think the goal behind it was that the, the appropriately sized infrastructure is already in the ground now as development may continue in, in different areas of the township. 
I think that was all the questions. I hope I didn't miss any. Okay. Good job, Mr. Box. Thank you very much. Commissioners, anything else before we have a motion? <coughs> Mr. Mr. Just go ahead, Mr. Bentley. Sorry. Go ahead, Mr. Bentley. Uh, just to follow up uh, with one of the comments I wrote down, uh, there was a, a concern about does there need to be a certain percentage of low income uh, in no. these uh, as, as part of this rezoning? No. I uh, know. And Mr. Mr. Chairman, just to follow up on that, mm -hmm. Mr. Box, if an individual here lives in a house and not a condo in the sub in this township, what's the likely zoning of their property? R1. R1. So all of our subdivisions, if it's not a condo, it's it's in R1 zoning. Correct. If you're in a condo, you're in a different zoning. If it was in an apartment, it would be in a different zoning. The R1 zoning is the zoning you see around a standard residential subdivision. So it has the word urban attached to it, which I heard that as well. But if you picture a subdivision in Macomb Township, that's R1. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Duckfield. Anyone else? All right. Do we have a motion on this item? Mr. Chairman, um, I need to, I have a conflict on one of these parcels. Okay. And I think Mr. Bentley does too. Yes. Um, we have to repeat so, ourselves. Okay. Yeah, I, you want to address that? Right. One, two, I think you all have uh, the, the list in front of you with the highlighted parcel, <coughs> one belonging to Mr. Bentley and one belonging to Mr. Oliver. I think those can be, uh, motions can be yes. can be made with those those ones separated uh, and and uh, so we would do two motions then correct well potentially we? three, uh, three. There, there's no conflict for mr. Oliver to vote on mr. Bentley's property and vice versa gotcha okay I guess unless, you unless know mr. what I'm gonna make the motion to approve the mass rezoning uh, minus uh, 0813100011, which is Mr. Bentley's property. Do I have a second? Did I do that right? Uh, I think we want to subtract both Mr. Bentley's and Mr. Oliver's properties. No, there would be three motions. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so I think so he's going both so then? Mr. O No, Mr. Oliver can vote on this one, so you can do this. Right, so I was right. Cor correct. So there's three motions. The one right. would be without Mr. Bentley's, which means Mr. Oliver can vote on that one. Correct. Mr. Bentley cannot. The second one would be without Mr. Oliver's, which means that Mr. Bentley can vote on that. Correct. Mr. Oliver cannot. And then, the, so, so I I made a motion and to. The third one would be the bulk of. Through the mass rezoning yeah. minus Mr. Bentley's property. Mr. I will. There's no further discussion on the motion. Oh, strike, I will strike that. Let me, second. Wait a minute. Hold on. Let me order this because I apologize. I misspoke, and I think Mr. Box is correct. So there's three motions. One is on Mr. Bentley's parcel. The second one is Mr. Oliver's parcel, and the third is on the remainder, remainder. less those two parcels. Okay. Thank you. Correct. All right. I, I apologize for now. the confusion. Mm -hmm. All right. So I think I got it, Mr. Aloya. Uh, rezoning the mass rezoning residential one family suburban minus Mr. Mr. Aloya is that minus both of these properties? Yes, correct. So, so they'll both uh, accuse themselves. Correct? That's right for this one. From this one, no, 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 no. From this straight. one, they can vote. That's right. If you're minusing their property, okay, minus these two. Correct. Okay. Thank you. So minus zero eight one three zero 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 one one. And that's Mr. Bentley's property, <coughs> minus 08131000048, Mr. Oliver's property. Yes. So those properties aren't included. Right. That's my motion. I will go ahead and second the chair's motion. And we have presented. a second by Mr. Spadaforo. All right, Mr. Bentley, call the roll. Okay, Mr. Hardy? Yes. Mr. Spadaforo? Yes. Mr. Bentley, uh, I can't, yeah, yeah I can vote on this. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, Mr. Tuckfield? Yes. Mr. Schuto? Yes. And Mr. Oliver? Yes. Okay. Okay. Motion passes. Now, Mr. Lawyer, the second motion is just the one property, correct? Yes, either Mr. Bentley's. One property at a time. One at a time. Correct. Okay, got it. Thank you. 
So I'm, I'd make a motion to approve the rezoning for 0813-100-048, which is Mr. Oliver's property. Do I have a second? I, I think second. that that parcel Seconded number. Seconded by Mr. Spadafora. I think the parcel number you just read is Mr. Bentley's property. No, not 048. No, 048. No, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yep. Okay. That's Mr. Oliver's. So we've got a motion on the floor. We've got a, a second by Mr. Spadafora. Mr. Oliver is going to abstain. Abstain. Call the roll, please, Mr. Bentley. Okay. Hold on. Okay. Mr. Hardy? Yes. Mr. Uh, Tuckfield? Yes. Mr. Shudo? Yes. Mr. Bentley? Yes. And Mr. Spanafora? Yes. Okay. Motion passes. Right. All right. Next motion to rezone 0813100011, which is Mr. Bentley's property. I make a motion to approve. And I will second that motion. And Mr. Spanafora is going to second. Mr. Bentley? Call the roll. Okay. But you'll uh, abstain. Okay. Uh, Mr. Hardy? Yes. Mr. Spadafora? Yes. Mr. Tuckfield? Yes. I abstain. Uh, Mr. Shudo? Yes. Mr. Oliver? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you, everyone. All right. Old business. Plan unit development, general design plan, Maddox, permanent parcel, 0836-353-033-0836-353-023-0836-353-018, located on the north side of Hall Road, East of North Avenue, Section 36, Carl Zimmerman, Petitioner, Mr. Box. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, I think you all should have received an email uh, late this afternoon from, from Mr. Aloya. Uh, we have been continually working with them. We are down to just one item that they're trying to address, uh, and, and I think at this time they're asking to be tabled to the next meeting. And Ben, unless I'm, I'm missing something. No, I mean, we've made a ton of progress since the last meeting. Um, we are down to one issue related to a unit that we have to figure out within, or they have to figure out within their condo, but um, I believe that uh, we will be done on October 5th. I know I keep saying that, but there's a lot of work being done behind the scenes to get to this point, so. So you've made a lot of progress this time, correct, sir? Very much so okay. by both parties, both the township right. and the petitioner. So is there any discussion from our commissioners? Do we have a motion to table until, what would the date be? October 5th. October 5th. So moved. Motion by Mr. Oliver. We have second. a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Bentley. Um, Mr. Bentley, please call the roll. Yes. Uh, Mr. Oliver. Yes. Uh, Mr. Bentley. Yes. Uh, Mr. Uh, Shudo. Yes. Mr. Spadafora. Yes. Mr. Hardy. Yes. And Mr. Tuckfield. Yes. Okay. Motion passes. All right. Next item is public comments on non-agenda items. Just a reminder that. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you need to remind. <laughs> yeah. Never mind. Since everybody has vacated uh, the meeting hall, we'll move on to the next item. Commissioner's comments. Mr. Spadafora. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, but seeing everyone has left the room, our friends and neighbors and the residents, I suppose, for those who are watching on television, there's been a lot of discussion tonight about master plan related issues. And the um, planning commission would like to uh, invite our residents here in Macomb Township to a community open house. That's this coming Thursday, two days from now, uh, September 23rd, uh, from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the Macomb Township Recreation Center right across the street uh, to my right uh, over there on uh, Macomb Street. Many of you, I'm sure, have already uh, patronized that. 
uh, the Planning Commission is hosting for that, and we really would value your uh, comments and your input uh, because the success of this plan will be certainly aided by a lot of your comments that uh, uh, my colleagues here at the Planning Commission and I would uh, definitely consider. Um, with a caveat to that, um, unfortunately, as, as a Planning Commissioner and as one of the co-hosts, along with our Planning Department, other township officials, um, I'm going to ask to respectfully be uh, excuse while I don't have to probably formally do that this is an important meeting but I'm afraid that um, the wedding of one of my sons which is this mm -hmm. uh, later this week is going to take priority over that so I won't be present as absolutely my son's wedding uh, is this Friday and I have a lot of wedding uh, related uh, activities but for you know the, our residents who can attend we would certainly welcome your attendance to open house it's for four hours so come in you don't have to stay for the whole thing obviously and uh, please give us your feedback because we would like to hear that thank you mr spadafore and congratulations thank you all right anyone else mr, mr. tuckfield i just have one follow-up question for mr box one of the questions i got on this open house is is the uh, rec center going to be charging admission to come into this they are not Okay, so residents will not have to pay to get into this. <laughs> That's correct. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thanks. All right, is that it for the comments from the commissioners? And we're moving on to the Macomb Township Board of Trustees Liaison Update. Mr. Charles Oliver. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. A couple things. Uh, as I don't know if everyone knows that our old assessor, Dan Hickey, is retired. And the board has uh, uh, appointed uh, Kim Patterson to be our new assessor. And uh, she's now in a, a level four. And uh, I could really compliment her. She's been with us for probably every bit of 10 years. And uh, she worked very hard on that level four. She explained a lot to me of, of all the involvement on it. And, um, so now she's our new assessor. So if awesome. you got assessing issues, you deal with her. And uh, just for the record, September 10th, uh, going forward in Macomb Township will be Dan Hickey Day. <laughs> All right, we made a resolution and gave him that day. So just okay. point of interest. Gotcha. But the real big news yeah. of last week was opening a new library. I think um, anyone that attended or uh, has been it yet, it, it's going to be a great asset to this community. There was the residents were just ecstatic over it that were there, uh, and it was great to walk into that facility and uh, knowing that's part of Macomb Township really makes you feel good. So, I advise everyone, uh, the board members, to go check it out because it's a fantastic facility and it's going to really add a lot to this community that's awesome and that's it awesome okay and i will give you my granddaughter's critique when we go through there on friday all right so she's 28 months so that's she'll good. have probably something to share zba liaison over there. mr chairman nothing uh, nothing to add this evening excuse me nothing to add okay thank you <laughs> planning department items Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, one thing I will say, uh, seconding uh, Mr. Oliver's comments, uh, congratulating Kim Patterson on, on being promoted to Township Assessor. Uh, I will say, though, I, I could be wrong about this, but I think the September 10th Dan Hickey Day was only September 10th, 2021. I don't think it's uh, oh, every, every year. I thought every year he was going to come. <laughs> um, Thank you. With regards to the master plan, I think Mr. Spadafora kind of beat me to the punch, but yes, we are having our, our open house. Um, unfortunately, everybody has left the room at this time. I, I wish they could hear this. So for those watching on TV and, and those who may be watching this days after, or I should say a day after, Hopefully a day after yes. um, please come and, and give us your comments, give us your input. Uh, you know, I, I'm probably preaching to the choir to you guys because you hear it all the time when, when residents show up and complain about things and and even this evening about a master plan from 2008 um, oftentimes frustrated with how things are planned they're oftentimes showing up 
uh, after they can make a difference. This is the time that they can make a difference and have their input uh, weighed in. Uh, and unfortunately, it usually they tend to not weigh in until there's uh, a shovel in the ground behind their house. Uh, but really, this is the time that they can make the most <coughs> impact. So I encourage everyone, anyone who's listening, please show up and, and give us your feedback. Okay. That's all. That's it? Yep. All right. Thank you. All right. Motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Oliver. Seconded by Mr. Spadafora. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Good night, everyone.